Hey, thanks for stopping in. I'm John Zadar. I'm the host of On Top and Hot, and this is Wednesday, November 9th. Now, on this show, I like to talk to you about hot penny stocks. I'm a day trader. I'm out there all day trading them, and I see a lot of activity going on. And at the end of the day, I like to share stocks that other investors have been watching and stocks I've been watching. Now, I like trading penny stocks because they're on every single market. Any stock under five bucks qualifies, and I can find them everywhere. Trading on the major exchanges, it's absolutely free. I can buy 10,000 shares for nothing, or I can buy one share just to bump the price up, not affect my average, and it didn't cost me anything to do it. So I like trading on the major exchanges. But the OTC has its advantages, even if I have to pay for my transactions. First off, these stocks are so cheap that if they it just moves up a smidge. You didn't even see that, did you? I can make a good profit off of that move. And these are startup companies. So you get the right one and stay in long enough, you can make some huge gains down here. The opportunities are just brimming over. So I like to trade penny stocks wherever they may be. Now, most of the stocks I look at are on the OTC market. All that news right there was news I've read over the last four or five days. There's nothing boring in there, no financials or public offerings. Though that's important, it just isn't what most of us are interested in. So you've got your mergers, your acquisitions, new technology, expansion, things like that. The juicy news. So if you take your time and read it, I'm sure you'll find something that interests you. Now, when I'm doing my research on all of these OTC stocks, even getting that news, I get it all from here, the otcmarkets.com website. I love this site. It's not perfect, but it's updated every single day by FINRA and the SEC. And if you're going out to Google searching for current information amongst all that outdated information, good luck. Look, just start here. You'll save yourself a lot of time and frustration. You're going to get a lot more research done and actually enjoy it. All right, let's take a look at how our OTC market finished today. It's looking pretty sad, folks. I'm going to go ahead and refresh this and, whoa, earthquake. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and refresh this and hope that we get a bump. Yeah, we did get a little bit of a bump. Thank goodness. All right, our dollar volume just jumped a little bit. It is now at 1.6 billion. Share volume, it's still under what we were yesterday. 5.5, we're at 5.1 billion. That is sad, folks. We don't need it to get any less, I promise. Trades, all right. We are real close to that 300,000. We were at 321,000 yesterday, and we haven't broken that in eight nine months, something like that. It's been a long time. And we're getting close to it again, 298,000. Maybe when I refresh it in an hour, it'll actually be over. So things don't look great. We see a little bit of sparkle on the corner over here, but that's about all we got going. And watching the stocks today, there wasn't a lot of activity across the board, as you can see. But there's always stocks out there shining, and I got some to share with you. Come on. First stock we're taking a look at is getting some buzz online now. This is ticker WNBD, Winning Brands Core. They just made a deal not too long ago. They acquired this long-standing, unique technology company, a company that's been doing business with a lot of major corporations for a while, and now this company owns that technology, and I think it's a huge opportunity for them to make some huge revenues. Now, they do do other things, and we're going to take a look at that as well. Now, today they didn't have any new news or filings come out. As you can see, there was no gains or losses today. So why are we looking at this company? Well, for three reasons. One, the potential. That merger, that new technology is a big deal. We're going to focus in on that a little bit. Second, somebody asked me to take a closer look at this, didn't they, Geo888? And I hope I give you your money's worth, pal. And the third reason is kind of personal. That is my favorite buy-in price right there, folks, double zero one. It is the second smallest move you can do for a 100% gain. Go from double zero one to double zero two, it only moves that much. You didn't see that either, did you? That's my point. And going to double zero three isn't much more of a stretch. So you can make hundreds of percent gains buying on the one in the double zeros. I love this zone. And this would be a good time to consider this stock if you see the same potential I see. They are on the pink tier, they are current, and they have a verified profile and transfer agent. I tell you all the time to look for these ticks. They are important. The longer you're in a stock, the more important they are. So let's take a look at what this company does. 
Winning Brands Corporation owns and manages a portfolio of consumer and commercial product brands and services. In the chemical sector, Winning Brands lead product is 1000 plus stain remover spray cleaner concentrate. The lead retailers for this product in the USA are Home Depot, Walmart, Amazon, Do It Best Hardware, and select independent hardware stores. The lead retailers for this product in Canada is Lowe's Home Improvement Stores. Others in Canada include select locations of home hardware, Federated Co-ops, Benjamin Moore, and other independent retailers. Niagara Mist Perfume. Official fragrance of the city of Niagara Falls is available in select Sheraton, Marriott, and specialty retail locations. In 2022, Winning Brands commenced the launch of its tech division with the Gesture Tech brand of electronics, WW Gesture Tech Health, which we're going to go to. Additional tech division operations will include TV broadcast aggregation to provide free TV access via internet as an advertising sponsorship platform for internet advertisers. So they've got a lot going on here. You can see they have a perfume, they've got a product here, but they've got more products I'm gonna show you. And you've just found out the company, Gesture Tech, which has been around since 1986. Let's take a look at some information over at their most recent financial disclosure. So we're jumping on into their most recent financial disclosure. This came out in June of this year. They have got a lot of information in here, folks. So if you're really interested in WNBD, come read this. It's not that hard and it is saturated with great information. And that's why we're here. I'm going to tag on to a bunch of it. You'll have to pardon me as I scroll because it's a very long document. First thing we're going to take a look at is the float. It is huge, folks. 5.4 billion shares in the float. Doesn't excite me at all. And you have to consider the fact that they could do a reverse split. When the price of the stock is super low and they have a ton of shares, that's a very easy way to get the price up fast. So I'm not saying they've said anything about it. I'm just saying keep that in mind. Now the company has more than just that one product they were telling us about, that 1000 plus stain remover. The big deal about that product is that you get this big bottle and you're supposed to use one bottle that you just keep refilling and diluting with water so you don't have to keep buying 20 bottles they give you 20 bottles worth in one bottle and that's what they like to advertise is that they're cutting down on plastic but it's also a non-chemical cleaner and they say it's the world's most versatile cleaning solution some of their other products they have track moist this is a soil conditioner and dust suppressant for sports venues you know when you're outside at sporting events or a concert there's dirt there's dust they've got a product for that regard which is a multi-use bunker gear cleaner haven't a clue what that is but they tell us it targets firefighting organizations with that product then they have Brilliant, which is a professional wet cleaning solution. This is for dry cleaners. And they did mention the Niagara Mist perfume that they sell at Niagara Falls targeting the tourists. Now let's take a look at some information about this deal they just made. They did consummate and complete the deal with Jester Tech Health. It is complete. It is done. This is some of the information they give us here. Winning Brands and Jester Tech Management are planning to renew momentum of the Jester Tech brand. Now listen to this. The Jester Tech System's bankruptcy from 2019 to present combined with the postponed major tech installation projects because of COVID impaired Jester Tech's operations. So not only did COVID impair them, but they were in the midst of a bankruptcy. Now I don't know what's going on with this company. I haven't done a deep dive. I don't know if it's over. I would presume it is. You normally can't make any deals until you're out of bankruptcy. So that's a presumption on my part. With these factors now receding, management anticipates that momentum will be restored to the brand, delivering significant growth to winning brands. The tech industry sector in which Gesture Tech operates, immersive gesture control of computer and audiovisual displays, is widely considered to be vast in scope and long-lasting in potential. The scope encompasses a wide range of commercial, educational, advertising, and health care settings.
The Jester Tech companies have a track record of supplying products and services to some of the world's most discerning commercial customers. Jester Tech also enjoys a legacy of patent protection for competitive advantage. Winning Brands Management considers the Jester Tech acquisition to be the most significant business development in Winning Brands business history. And right there, you can see the companies they're doing business with. I'll make it a little larger for you. Now you see Sony up here? Now I don't remember exactly what it's called, but Sony had a PlayStation extra device. It was a little camera like I'm talking into right now that you hooked up to your PlayStation and it saw you and put you into the game. Well, you saw that video I was just showing you as we were talking about what they do and you saw the man in the video. That's one of their pieces of technology. That's their patent. Sony bought the rights to that patent, not the license. They get to use it. They didn't have control of it. So all these companies are working with their technology one way or another. So the companies been around and doing business for a long time. Now there is more information here I want to jump back into, but I want to continue on with Gesture Tech right now. So we have jumped over to Gesture Tech Health. This is their website. Now they've got a couple of sites for Gesture Tech, but Gesture Tech Health is the company that they've got a hold of. And this company does a lot. I really can't cover it all, but I want to read a little bit here to you. As the inventor pioneer and world leader in camera enabled gesture recognition technology we have a library full of solutions applicable to the health market back in 1986 we invented full body immersive gesture control we then went on to shape the field of video gesture control and the array of technologies available today to date, we have been awarded over 45 patents and our technology is on hundreds of millions of devices globally and in over 8,000 public installations. So this is not a startup company, folks. This is not a new technology that needs to be proven. It's being used and just getting better and better and better. Now they've got all these different types of products, I guess you would say, different ways that this can be used. They've got a little picture here. Some of them project onto the wall or project onto the floor. Others use multiple devices at once. Some work with you in the picture. Some work with you just having access to what's up there. They've got lots of them. They don't just work with physical therapy. They also work with your cognitive abilities. So they are doing an absolute lot. And where they can go with this is just... We, it's in games, it's in health, it's in advertising, it's in commercials, it's in branding. There is all sorts of uses for this and I expect it is going to explode, especially with the way we're taking off in new technology. This has been around for a while, but it's getting more practical to use now. So I'm quite excited about this company, Gesture Tech Health. Now jumping back into that uh, financial report, they have another deal that they're doing. They are the consultation. Why did it get all goofy on me? <laughs> there we go. WNVD's consultation to HADV has fostered the emergence of CBD beverage infusion project. HADV is on the market. That is Health Advanced. They're on the OTC market and they are creating a new CBD beverage. It is the world's first CBD infused de-alcoholized wine beverage of its type and will garner significant industry and consumer attention. The CB operation is based in New York State. HADV will carry out master distribution from Buffalo, New York. The cost for the CBD product developments are being borne by HDV, so this company hasn't got to pay for anything. HADV retains intellectual and property rights, whereas winning brands will participate in product success on the earned basis. How about that? You don't have to put anything in, but you get something out. The structure will generate sales royalties to WNBD. So they've got a CBD drink, they've got new technology, they've got a perfume, they've got these non-chemical products that they're creating. What else we got here? Winning brand subsidiary Niagara Mist Marketing Ltd. doing business as Niagara Mist Cosmetics. 
uh, has the contractual right to utilize the trademark perfume descriptor Niagara Mist, the official fragrance of the city of Niagara Falls. Now what they're saying is, is they can put that on their bottles. Niagara Mist, the official fragrance of the city of Niagara Falls. I don't know how they got that, but that's what tourists are looking for, the official. You know, they want the actual one. So they're going to put that back on the market. They said things all slowed down because of COVID, but everything is getting back in gear right now. So the company is doing quite a lot. I don't know if there's any more here. No, they've just got pictures here. They've got their perfumes. They've got their uh, non uh, chemical products they have their new technology and there's lots of information here so come on over here if you really are interested in the company let's go see what the volume was on this today relative volume around all this company was not much she went from 15 million to 19 million today she had a small jump but didn't go anywhere did she share structure well, we just looked at the share structure. We know what that is, 5.4 billion shares, EGADs. Financials, are they making any money? We didn't look at the financials over there. They were way down at the bottom. Uh, they do have some assets, but they have more liabilities than assets. I think it's about a three to one ratio. And they are making some money. Uh, at the end of last year, they did $407,000. We know it's thousands because we got to put three zeros behind any of the numbers here. And they got to keep three quarters of that. Disclosures. We got anything new for this company? Not since September. And we know all of their financials are current. So let's see if there's any new news. Actually, I've got this already set up here right there. Because I did want to talk about this news. Now, they started this acquisition of Gentech back in April. But all that time, they weren't just sitting on their hands. Look at this. Back in June, Gesture Tech Division of Winning Brands releasing upgrades to its popular iRex rehab system. That was one of the choice products that they have over there at Gentech Health. Then here in July, use of Gesture Tech by hospitals grows with Cedar sinai Medical Center installation. In August, Gesture Tech resumes European deliveries of its patented interactive gesture control technology. And then in September, hello Japan, Gesture Tech resumes deliveries to Asia of their patented interactive gesture control technology. And finally, here in November, winning brands acquisitions of Gesture Tech brand is completed. Folks, they've been doing a lot. You can see that Gesture Tech's business is growing. They're back in Europe. They're back in Asia. They're here in America. They're in Canada. And I don't know where they're going to go but up. That's the way I see it. What do you think? Let's go take a look at that chart. So let's take a look at WNBD. We're going to be doing our charting on my free trading platform. This is Think or Swim. You get it free over at TD Ameritrade. And all you got to do is keep your account open and you can use it anytime you like. So we are looking at a six month, four hour chart here. And I'm a little surprised it has a lot more activity and volatility than I would expect. Most stocks that are in triple zero price zone, which is where this is most of the time, don't move around a lot. They just do this, a barcode or a picket fence, this little dee 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 right across the screen from two to three to two to three to two to three. And they'll do that for days, weeks, even months. So this is a lot more activity than I am used to. We had a high bubble here of double zero one three in April when they were talking about the merger with Gentech. And right now we are at double zero one. And in my opinion, we're going to crush that high and it isn't going to take long to do it folks and we are on our way this is a great buy-in price right now as soon as it hits double zero two you've made a hundred percent and they have just completed the deal so there's no reason for anything to slow down they're expanding now they're back in Europe they're back in Asia they're already in the US they're already in Canada and they're getting back to work COVID is slowed down everything is getting back to normal so I expect the stock to continue to rise our technicals right now are hot hot every single one of them it looks like a duplicate picture going all the way up they're all just shooting at the same angle and all of our SMAs are in perfect condition everything looks good let's come on down to our 20-day one-hour view 
So she was going sideways with just that one bounce up and down, up and down. And then the last two days she took off. Boy, she had a nice breakout here yesterday. Hit a high of 001, which is where she's sitting right now. She's basically going sideways, consolidating while people figure out things. And I think she's going to figure out that she wants to go up. Technicals are still very warm and hot. Our RSI is at 62. We have a little bit of pullback, but I'm believing in the potential of this company. Company. Looking at our five day, five minute. So there's our jump yesterday. She did jump quick from triple zero seven up to one. Uh, that's just about 45% gains. And she's gone sideways with some ups and downs, just one tick up, one tick down. She's bouncing off of the 50 day SMA right now. And the technicals look like she's about ready to start climbing again. We've got a push away here and a crossover imminent on the MACD. By the way, this is my PPO. It's just like the MACD, but it works with a percentage of the price instead of the whole price. I kind of favor it more than the MACD, but I still like my MACD. And our RSI is pushing up too. So everything looks good. It's not showing super duper strength, but it's been in the triple zero. This is like a baby. You can't expect them to pick up a whole lot. Once they get up into the double zeros, they're teenagers. They got more activity, more smarts, and they start moving in the right direction and continuing that way. I know it's dumb analogy. My point, I think this company has got everything going for it right now. Everything looks decent. They're a startup company with the technology that is perfect for where we're at right now. What do you think? I think 001 is a great time to consider it. Please consider it. We are now taking a look at a penny stock on the NASDAQ. This is ticker NRBO, Nurbo Pharmaceuticals. She finished the day at $1.62 with 29% gains. Now there's a lot going on with this company. 20 days ago, the stock was at a price of over $14. Now she's at $1.62. Well, they did have a reverse split at the end of September, 1 and 30. That should have kicked the price up, but you know how reverse splits happen. You get the price up and people sell and they see how many shares they've lost and the price comes tumbling down. And right now she is way down here at $1.62. And now has this super duper small float of just about 500,000 shares. A half a million shares, folks. Now, if this stock sells a million shares in a day, that means they have to sell the entire float twice. If they sell 4 million, they have to sell the entire float eight times. So how many shares did they sell today? 52 million. And there's only a half a million shares out there. So that means they had to sell all the shares 100 times over all day long. That is just mind boggling. And normally she's only doing a quarter million shares a day. So there was a lot of attention being paid to this company today. And there could be some more tomorrow or the next day. And the share structure, I already told you, they had that reverse split. Outstanding shares is still under a million, 888,000, and the float is just about 500,000. Disclosures, well, the only one is an 8K that came out today, and that's really in the news. So I'm just going to jump on into the news. November 8th. Neurobow Pharmaceuticals, a clinical stage biotechnology company focused on therapies for cardiometabolic diseases, today announced the closing of an underwritten public offering of units with a gross proceeds of $17.3 million. Their public offering is over. They've been selling a bunch of shares out there, diluting everything. <laughs> And they've made $17.3 million. Now they've done a reverse split and they've pulled all those shares back into the bank. That's what they did. They took them out of the bank, threw them out on the market, sold them to everybody, made $17.3 .1, million. And then with the reverse split, pulled them all back and put them back into the bank. That's what they've done. Then on top of that, Nurbo also announced the closing of a concurrent private placement of a Series A convertible preferred stock with warrants with proceeds of $15 million. So between 17 and 15, they've got over $32 million in their hands right now. 
I don't know what the problem is with the company. I don't know what things are going on with it. I haven't done a deep dive. But the price has fallen from $14 in 20 days down to $1.62. They did have a public offering. I don't know when it started. Could have been a year ago. Could have been a week ago. Now it's done. People get excited when a public offering is done because now you're not diluting anymore and they've got all this money. But then they went and did a reverse split. So now you don't have dilution. You've got value with a half a million in the float. My God, this is just boggling to me the way these companies play with their shares. Let's go take a look at that chart now. Well, I wasn't expecting that. This is an RBO six month, four hour chart. We got a high bubble here of $63 in September. Now they did do the reverse split in September, but I believe it was September 29th. And this spike is on the 13th. And she's got lots of huge spikes here in the 30s, the 20s. And her average price is right here at the $15 mark. Then she had a big tumble and she is way down here now, hitting a low bubble of $1.18 and we're at $1.62 one day later. And you can see the volume is coming into play right now. Our technical shows she's trying to recover. It's not very strong, but we got a crossover on our MACD. Our uh, PPO and our ADX show that they're struggling, but they don't show any decisive action right now. And our RSI is in the toilet, folks. It's underneath 30 at 28. Let's take a look at our 20-day, one-hour view. Well, there you go, $14.50 20 days ago was a very fast fall down to that low and you can see all the volume is coming in right now in these last two days and the technicals are still struggling but they do show a fight going on it's not complete surrender five day five minute all right so you had your fall here and five days ago we were at eight bucks she came down real quick in one day two days of sideways action negotiated the 200 here was thinking about going up and then decided no boom came down here and hit her low bubble and now is just crawling across the floor slowly working her way up sitting on the 200 technicals don't show anything exciting i don't see a whole lot on the chart i'm not quite sure why she fell it seems interesting that they would put all those shares on the market and then pull them all back and put them in the bank and create this super duper low float which is the real appeal at this point she's had some high prices here in the last five days for god's sake seven dollars that that would get you four about 400 percent gains if she just went up to the high of five days ago if she goes up to the high of 20 days ago you're you're looking at what a thousand percent gain well 800 it's a huge gain for a nice price right now but i don't know that she's going to do that some more due diligence but the news they've got money they've now got all their shares back and we got a super duper low float after a huge fall it does look like a setup doesn't it and the last stock we're taking a look at is WNFT. You want to guess what sort of business they want to go into? This is Worldwide NFT. Now, they didn't have any news. They didn't have any filings today, but they did have a tweet by a man named George Sharp. He was the custodian for this company. He saved it. It was on the expert market. He pulled it out, cleaned up all their filings, got it pink, put it back on the market, and he's looking to make a deal. Well, today he tweeted about a court case about one of the people involved in this company trying to cancel his shares and though the tweet is kind of important i think there's more weight connected to the case than rather the shares and i'm going to share some information i found from july about that so wnft finished today at about four and a half cents with almost 50 percent gains for a simple tweet she's on the pink tier and current she got a transfer agent verified but not a verified profile not yet now, they're not in business yet. They're not making any money, so they're a shell company, and that's the way it should be. So what was the relative volume around this company? Simple little tweet. Not bad. Jump from 1.5 million up to 9 million shares. Pretty good jump. Share structure. All right, we are now at a half a billion shares. Not too long ago, we did a forward split. If you had 10 shares, you then had 30 after the split. It was a three to one. So they did increase the share count, and we are now up to over a half a billion. Financials, all zeros, right? Because they're a shell company, we're not going to see anything here. 
and the disclosures. I'm always looking for 8Ks or 1Ss or something. We've got a, a quarterly report that just came out two days ago. Now, even though they're not making any money, that doesn't make that of null effect. There's going to be information in there about where they came from, what they've done, and what they're thinking about doing right now. So it wouldn't hurt to take a look at it. And the news. I think they are completely bald. Absolutely nothing here. So let's just jump on over to that tweet. This came out at about uh, quarter after two today. So when we look at the chart, let's see if there's a bounce at quarter after two. George Sharp tells us that the Nevada Supreme Court suggests that Colossi has no status to appeal the ruling canceling his WNFT shares as he was not party in the underlying custodianship case. It is a logical approach by the NVSC who provides Colossi 14 days to show why the court's position is wrong. And then he actually shows us the court filing which was filed with the Secretary of State's office. You're not going to find these anywhere else. And there's a lot of court cases that make a difference in how the stock runs so it never hurts to actually have access to this information. Now there's information to back up why the case is more important than the shares. They want to cancel the shares, which I think everybody is focused on, but it's really getting this case resolved that's important. They tell us here, and I found this from July 8th of this year, with the completion of the company's name change and forward split, WNFT is now awaiting the conclusion of the court proceedings with former officer Warwick Colossi. Mr. Colossi has appealed the lower court's rulings regarding the cancellation of his shares. While the company is confident that the rulings will be upheld, they cannot enter into any acquisitions or reverse mergers while the litigation is continuing. As such, no transactions can be deemed to be pending. Yeah, they can't say anything's pending, but the man's working. He's getting ready for once this case ends, it looks like he's ready to run. First off, they've got an investor here. WNFT has entered into an agreement with Forwardly. They're on the OTC market, ticker F-O-R-W. They're going to buy 5 million warrants at 32 cents. Now, folks, the price of the stock right now is 4.5 cents. Now, I'm not quite sure how warrants come into play here, but... He is selling these at 32 cents, and normally warrants are cheaper. But in either case, that is uh, going to be a big chunk of money, $200,000 for these warrants. But on top of that, they are getting $5 million in equity financing for the purpose of operation capital for an acquisition or reverse merger. So we've got investors, we've got financing, do we have a target? We absolutely do. WNFT is now in discussions and negotiations to acquire assets in the NFT and blockchain space. No surprise about the NFTs. So yeah, they do. But what is surprising? The company, Forwardly, is headed by George Sharp, a longtime whistleblower, advocate against microcap fraud, and a defender of shareholder rights. So he's in charge of Forwardly, and he's in charge of this company. And he is that, folks. He's a whistleblower. He first got known for pointing the finger at companies that were pulling the wool over the investors' eyes. So he does have a good following, but a lot of people give him crap. It's a shame, but that's just the way investors are. So. We are waiting for this Colossi case to end so that George Sharp can pick up the ball and start running. That's what I think our eyes should be on. This is WNFT, and I can see we've been here before. This is a six-month, four-hour chart. This blue line tells me we were here on July 30th. We looked at this stock after it ran for two days. Boy, it had a huge jump there. Second day was a nice rise as well. We looked at it then. Third day, she had another rise. You could have caught some on that day. And then she just fell away. I mean, hard and fast. She came crashing down. And she's been down here for the longest time, has even gotten lower. Hit a low bubble here of two cents about 10 days ago. And she has been slowly, ever so slowly creeping up over that 50. You can see our price bar got real big here. Volume is getting bigger and she is pushing away from that 50 day, trying to get to her 200 day SMA. Technicals are all on fire. RSI is in the overbought right now. MACD and PPO are pushing up. Everything looks really good. 20-day, one-hour view. 
Not a whole lot going on for about two weeks here. She came off of that low bubble with no enthusiasm, then pushed up over the 200, and for the last few days, it's just been sitting on the 200, and with today's tweet, she jumped and hit a high bubble here of five cents, actually 5.1 cents. All the technicals are still very strong with just a wee bit of pullback right now. On the five day, five minute, well, she is surely respecting that 200-day SMA, isn't she? She had a nice climb, came down on it hard, even poked her head underneath. Came back up underneath, and now has got a good serious climb, but she's falling fast. And I would not be surprised to see her come all the way back down to that 200. And because it's so far, she'll probably come down even lower, which will scare the pants out of a lot of people, and then hopefully come back up. But we are dealing with a soft catalyst. The tweet was about shares being canceled, and I don't even know how many shares there are, so that could be a big deal. But I see the fact that this litigation needs to end so that he can get back to business, get some deals pending, put out some news presses about mergers or acquisitions. That's going to get the stock running. And they said 14 days before they have a decision about this litigation. So keep your eyes on WNFT at least for 14 days at that decision. God only knows what's going to happen. But the stock has been growing on little bits of news right now. She could do something. It can't hurt to watch it, can it? So there we have three stocks to consider. Agreed, these aren't rockets, they're not exploding with big news, but WNBD has got new technology. NBOR does have a super duper low float, and WNFT has got something going on that he can't really talk about because they're not pending until the litigation ends. So at least tune back on that one in 14 days. But you're gonna miss the gains if you don't at least watch these. So take those tickers, put them in your watch list. It can't hurt and it could make you some money. The more you know, folks, the more you're gonna grow. See ya.